Hello and welcome to the F1 Feed Series podcast, your guide to keeping up to date on everything in the junior single-seater world. I'm your host, Jim Kimberley, and while we at F1 Feed Series like to think we know a decent amount about motorsport, the experience of this week's guest puts us all to shame. Today, we have a driver who's driven in pretty much everything there is to drive in the single-seater world. GP3, F2, F1, IndyCar, Porsche Super Cup, Super Formula, European Le Mans, WEC. Is there anything that I've missed, Tatiana? Um, you made me feel old, but hey, so happy to, to be with you guys. Uh, thanks for that introduction. You're, you're a lot younger than me, so don't feel, don't feel too old. <laughs> but yes, of course, it's Tatiana Calderon is joining us for the podcast, and she is racing more things than I could imagine in a dream life. So, so happy to have you on. Your knowledge, your experience is so amazing. Joining me for the episode, uh, as well, on the back of a Transfer Weekly debut last week, is yeah. one of the F1 Feeder Series Dutch Legion and <laughs> our Super Formula editor, Rene Outman. Welcome yes. back, Rene. How are you? Hello. Uh, did you like that pronunciation of the surname? Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, the last few times you said like Utman, but it's more like out. But you're getting close to the Dutch pronunciation. It's time for you to learn some Dutch, Jim. Max, Max, Super Max, Max, Max. Exactly. Max. I think that's that's all the Dutch I need to know. Don't forget Beitzke. <laughs> of course, we love we love we love Beitzke Visser. Of course, of course, we do. Um, <laughs> you're very much distracted me now. But uh, before we get started. If you enjoy the podcast, please like, comment and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube or leave a rating or review if you're listening. You can leave a rating on Spotify and review us on Apple Podcasts. Again, plenty of things to plug, such as a Discord server with around 200, I think excess of 200 now real life drivers. And if you are watching uh, and you've watched previously, you will see that I've been wearing an F1 feeder series, or you would have seen, uh, I've been wearing an F1 feeder series hoodie, which at the moment is misplaced, but you can get your own or buy me a new one uh, by getting onto our Redbubble store for some F1 feeder series merchandise. Look in the podcast show notes or the description below if you're watching on YouTube. And also, we have the second show on the YouTube channel, as I alluded to, which Rennie Outman was joining on <laughs> with Chris McCarthy. And it's brilliant. It's trans called Transfer Weekly, and it's going through everything through the off-season about where drivers are going. We've had episode three just come out this week, talking uh, mainly about Roy Nassani, uh, Jack Dewan, um, who else do we have? Brad Benavides, loads of drivers to keep you up to date on who's going where is brilliant. So if you do want to keep up to date on all the driver announcements in the coming weeks and months, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, not to miss an episode. If you do subscribe, it really, really helps us out. And if you already are subscribed, thank you so much. It really, really helps. Okay, so what we usually do, Tatiana, are you going to say this is the F2 segment, the F3 segment, the Frecker segment, whatever. It's difficult with you because you you have different championships you've raced in. So I've put, I'm going to put this under the 2022 segment. And the first question is the most important question. How is your hand? Uh, it's ready to punch a couple of people. But uh, no, <laughs> no, thanks for asking. <laughs> no, I think, um, you know, it's the first time I broke something. And uh, it, it, I'm surprised how long it takes for it to like heal like I was talking a little bit with uh, Juan Manuel Correa and he was telling me oh it's better to break like a big bone because it heals much easier uh, rather than a small one and I'm like kind of like I, I have to agree right now although I haven't broke like a big one but um, but yeah it's, a, it's taking a little bit longer but for driving it's it's fine you know it's just a be uncomfortable in in certain positions to certain movements but um, mm. i'm hopeful it will be fully ready for 2023 oh, i hope so too i'm glad it's starting to progress i don't know if i agree with the advice of uh, jm there by saying break oh. a big bone just don't break any bones I, i've not broken <laughs> a bone uh touch wood but yeah don't don't break bones that's easy but it was the incident in monza wasn't it the it was the sprint race, the sprint race that you had the injury, and uh, I was trying to find 
a replay of it, and the best, the best bit I could see to see what happened to your hand was you um, gesticulating, I think is the English word, gesticulating to Ollie Caldwell about what the F was going on with that. So I thought your hand was working pretty well then, but maybe it was the other <laughs> hand. It's a good question. You know, I was like, after the incident, I didn't like, I, it was hurting me, but I thought it was going to be okay for the second day. I didn't even went to the medical center or anything. I just, uh, you know, went back to the hotel with a little bit of ice. And then the next day I was like, oh, I think the glove doesn't fit. So <laughs> my engineer was looking at me like, uh, I'm pretty sure that thing is broken. And I'm like, no way, because, you know, it hurts, but not that bad. Uh, and I, I had to go to the medical center because they wouldn't allow me to, to drive like my my crew, basically. And unfortunately, yeah, it was it was broken. But um, to me, I didn't do anything wrong. Unfortunately, like the stewards didn't have enough like footage. That's one thing that sometimes I, I would like F2 to have, like, you know, these onboard videos where mm. um, you can like, prove your point and on top of that learn whether you did a mistake or you know by driving with the little track time we have um mm. it would be nice to have an onboard but I, I couldn't prove that and there we go it was a one a first lap incident and unfortunately no lap for me on on that weekend so and two months of the track so yeah not the best not the best Italian memories for me well, I'll tell you something. Uh, I, I learned something from the ones a weekend, and that, that's the best drivers just end the races off the track and win championships. So you've got that in common with uh, a certain other South American who's done very well. But the second question I wanted to ask you is uh, what's turned into the classic off season one for all the drivers that have come on the podcast. And that is quite simply an open question. And that's how has 2022 gone from your perspective? Well, I feel like it's been like five years in one, <laughs> to be completely honest. You know, I, I started, we, we signed really late our, the IndyCar deal. So um, like January was like, okay, straight to, to America. I was super excited, IndyCar, but you know, a lot of things to learn, different workouts to, to be on time and, and ready for, for the start of the season, which uh, was not easy, honestly. Um, and and then, you know, I had these seven races. Um, I think I was, I was improving quite a lot. And then all of a sudden, you know, I find myself with with no seat. Um, I was like back home, like, oh my God, my, you know, my career is over because I have not seen all the um, possibilities that I had before joining IndyCar. You know, I, I left everything for IndyCar and and then it was like uh, a roller coaster, I would say. All of a sudden, I found myself with an F2 seat for four races, thanks to a Colombian singer, Carol G. So, like, <laughs> nothing is impossible in this life. I'm so grateful with, with her and all my sponsors for giving me, like, a second chance. But obviously, it was a huge challenge to to just jump in straight straight away, you know, without even having done any simulator work with or, or anything so i uh, extremely grateful for for everything this year then i had the the injury so i think i have gone through a lot of emotions but it has made me uh, a better person and 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 a much better driver so i i i cannot complain for how my 2022 season has gone obviously i would like to have a bit more stability next year <laughs> but uh but yeah yeah ha happy with with how how things went at the end of the day i love that level of positivity tatiana even when everything's gone a little bit crazy you have singers coming to back you out of nowhere and can kick start your career you're that classic tale everyone knows that tale as old as time um ready i know that you also love all motorsports i don't think you've raced in as many things as tatiana has but no, we've had no. not, not yet not yet you're still young um and I, I believe I'm just as old as Tatiana. Just uh, what's uh, you're from 1993, uh, Tatiana? Yes. Yeah, me too. Oh. Yeah, yeah, me too. You look young. I'm not that, not that young anymore, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Time is ticking. It's a number. 
I don't know how it works, but somehow you keep getting older, but you're never as old as I am. It's it's weird. Time yeah, sometimes it's, it's weird. Eh? It yeah, confuses me. But I know that you also love all those sports. So we've had several seasons finish, including Formula Two, including Super Formula, since your last podcast appearance. How have yeah. you enjoyed the season as well? Yeah, it was. It, look, you already texted me that you were about to ask me this, and I had a few hours time to think about this question but I still haven't really look 2022 was an amazing season I mean Formula One was cool although the Max Verstappen domination was maybe a little bit too much but IndyCar was just bonkers it was unreal I mean Tatjana even competed in those races but to watch it as a spectator was it was so incredibly challenging on track there were so many competitors who were able to win a race let's say 10 or 15 drivers could and in the end it all came down on the last race which was very exciting um, obviously I really enjoyed the endurance racing as well I've got a I've got a friend over here <laughs> for, the, for the benefit of anybody who is I need to promote watching. him right yeah, yeah, there's a, there's yeah, a Ben yeah. Fiscal little poster there that everybody's <laughs> proudly showing. I, I, went, uh, I went to a couple of uh, WEC and uh, LMS races with Ben as well. And uh, I really, I, I, wasn't, um, I wasn't really keen to watch uh, LMS or uh, WEC races. So I, I never seen those races Tatiana competed in, but now I visited them. It's, it's just another ball game, man. It's... it's mm. I got even more into motorsports this season. So 2023 will be even more races than this year, I guess. That's amazing. Uh, the positivity coming off you already. You can tell how much you've enjoyed it. And yeah, we've got what about, <laughs> we, we figured out in the group chat earlier about a month of the off season before we get any uh, serious racing coming back in terms of the stuff you've watched so much on television. So a little bit to calm down, but then we're going to be all back in action. Just wanted to, Check in with you as well. If people haven't watched Transfer Weekly, one, why not? Because it's a really good show. But two, Renny, you made an appearance because there was some Super Formula news that came out last yes. week. Yes. What, can you tell us if there's anything more to tell us about that? And can you briefly summarise what you did say for anybody who hasn't watched Transfer Weekly? Well, it's the, the transfers are going wild in Japan. So... Um, Next to that Super Formula is just a brilliant series and everyone should follow it. Um, it's going absolutely wild there with uh, Liam Lawson coming in, driving for the Mugen Honda squad with uh, our old pal Raul Hyman uh, getting behind the wheel of the B-Max Honda. And there are certain transfers within the series. One driver at Honda wanting to drive for Toyota. It's going absolutely bonkers there. So... It's worth to follow F1 feeder series and obviously the transfer weekly part. But yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot going on there. I'll tell you something, Rene. I thought uh, Tatiana was PR friendly, but this is a brand new level of plugging stuff. Sorry, Tatiana, I rudely interrupted you. Please, uh, if you need to plug something, go ahead. No, I like to, I like to follow the, the, the gossip and the, um, the actual transfers because it's, uh, it's a really nice series. Uh, I have to agree with you 100%. Maybe some people don't give the value that it deserves. So it, it needs to be more promoted, but it's an amazing series. I'll tell you something, I'll give you two a room at this rate to have a little uh, Super <laughs> Formula love off. It's, uh, I, 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 the stuff I've seen with Super Formula, and I'm one of the people who needs to watch more of it, but there's only so many hours in, in the day, unfortunately. But one, the cars look amazing, and two, the racing is nuts. And they don't seem to be scared of racing in the wet like Formula One either, which is my but big... Jim, bit. Jim. Uh, sorry, I have to interrupt you because all those hours, I mean, there were 10 races this season and one race is one hour. So you only needed 10 hours, man. Come on. That's, a good, that's, that's some good chastising. <laughs> I, will, I will catch up in this off season. I'm going to have a couple of weeks off. So that's my perfect good time stuff. to catch up. Good um, you only need to wake up at 6 a.m. Or yeah. move to Vietnam <laughs> and it's nice times <laughs> over here like this <laughs> guy. So <laughs> um, There's one vital question because loads of audience questions and I do want to get into as many as we can so end up going too long all the time when I do the podcast but one question that you probably hate having and it probably comes around around this time every year Tatiana 
What can you tell us about your plans for next year at this point? Have you got anything confirmed? What have you got in the pipeline? What are you hoping to do? Anything you can tell us? You know, every year I think like, well, I'm, this year I'm going to get it before Christmas. Everything's going to be organized and I'm going to have a lovely Christmas and good New Year's. But I have nothing, <laughs> nothing decided, not like, you know, we're working hard on sponsorship because I think these days, um, you know, motorsport is, is, is turning. I feel like, um, you know, it's, it's about how much sponsorship you can raise um, to, to see what possibilities you have, honestly. Um, but I will continue to push as hard as I can to get a, a good seat in whether it's endurance, single seaters. I love being out there uh, racing. So hopefully some good news to share next year. <laughs> I understand. It's me going to go against what I literally just said, but another question for you before we go into uh, the audience questions. In the world of business that I've been involved in, a lot of stuff just ends up going on pause around this time of year. and We're recording at the start of December. Is it the same with the motorsport and the sponsorship? It's just like, oh, we'll deal with that after Christmas. Like there's that sort of barrier, that hurdle. Everyone just aware that there's a Christmas slowdown. So they defer things and try and push it to next year. Is that what you find when it comes to sponsorship and doing deals that we'll have a little bit of a lull at the moment? Yeah, like right now, like until like the 15th of December, you, you know with what you count really. Um, Sometimes that's good news or bad news, <laughs> depending. Uh, but yeah, it, it's kind of, then it's, it's just January, February that you, that you really get those last minute deals, um, mm -hmm. I would say. But um, yeah, in, in my case also, you know, I cannot say like, okay, I'm going to raise this. Therefore, I'm going to give you this exposure, this thing. Because um, until you don't have the money, you cannot like go to different places and, and ask for seats. But yeah, like it, I think it'll be late next year that, that you really get all those deals sort of in place and done, sadly. Well, last, or well, last year, this year, kind of going into the future a little bit, this year it worked out in <laughs> August for you. So January, February, August, who, hey, hey, there's plenty of time still. So I'm sure it's all gonna turn up good. That's enough questions from me because the F1 Feeder Series podcast is for you viewers and listeners. We're going to move on to the hashtag AskF1FS part of the podcast. If this is your first time watching or listening, you can get involved by using the hashtag AskF1FS on Twitter, joining our Discord and using the podcast questions channel, commenting on our YouTube videos or keeping an eye out on our Instagram posts and stories. Loads and loads and loads and loads of questions. Tatiana, very, very popular. Apologies if we don't read your question, but we're going to get through as many as we possibly can. First question comes from a regular question asker, a friend of the podcast, I'd say at this point, CM Parfait 16. Difficult question to start off, Tatiana. Hi, Tata. What was the best coffee you have ever had during your IndyCar stint? Huh. That's a really good question. Um... I think I found a coffee shop where like all like the McLaren guys, most of IndyCar was going there in Detroit uh, on every morning. And it was called Matt Cat Coffee. I even took some coffee home. Um, and it's, yeah, one of the best coffees I had in, in my life. So I recommend you guys go there if, if you have a chance in Detroit. Detroit for coffee. I never thought that would be the right answer. I'm going <laughs> to... No, no, but I'm going to put a little variation on the question then, because you've obviously travelled so well. What country has had the best coffee for you as well? So uh, everywhere I go, you know, all the coffee shops I go to, I like to taste Colombian coffee because, you know, in Colombia, we export the best coffee. Yeah. Uh, we don't have it in-house. So the best way you can taste Colombian coffee is outside of Colombia, but maybe hide this. This part of my answer, just thinking. <laughs> but uh, I think that's, that's true. Uh, one of the best films is, is Colombian coffee. 
I think that's a fine answer. I won't worry about it, Tatiana. The best coffee is Colombian, but go elsewhere to get it. It's the same thing. I went to Venezuela recently, and it's the same sort of uh, situation. They're growing it on volcanoes. It tastes amazing, but you're going to sell it for a higher price, exporting it to these countries. So it turns into such a good export. Uh, fascinating answer. Also, I really like that you had an answer available so quickly. There was no preparation with your Detroit. You knew exactly what it was. Um, the next question is from Franzi via Discord. How did you end up with a singer as your F2 sponsor? That is, uh, rich energy is one thing uh, and all the craziness around that, but this is nuts. Like, how did this happen? I know, crazy. Like, I still can't believe that she decided to sponsor me and to, like, save my season. But it was like, you know, we, when, once I, I knew I was not going to be uh, finishing the season in the car, um my sister she she started like talking to everybody like do you want a sponsor or you know an activation and and she knew somebody in the music business so she said like you know we have the whole car if you if you want to promote some of your artists and then like two year, uh, two days later uh, carol g started following me on instagram and i was like whoa this is amazing you know i i wrote her a uh, uh dm not knowing if she would reply but just to say you know i'm a, I'm a huge fan of of her work and um she's trying to empower women and, and 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 i love that so she replied that you know we'll be in touch and i was like hey okay, that's hopefully and then like you know like two days later it's like yeah carol do you want to sponsor you and we all of a sudden um you know my planets align and and there was a CD in F2 and, and we managed to to get in there. Can I ask, was it actually, because like, you have people managing accounts, I'm very aware of this as social media, was it an actual DM reply that you got? It wasn't like going through management, it wasn't going through an agent, it was just direct person to person, I want to get involved. Uh, yes, he said like, we're going to get in touch or we'll be in touch very soon. And I'm like, because I, I didn't know that the guy we spoke with that the artist that was interested was hair like I found out like later so it was like a like a real you know great message that I think it was from her uh not not her management but who knows but yeah now it's it's amazing how how things you know turn 100 uh, 360 from you know, knowing and connecting with people and, and letting them know what, what's out there. So um, I'm extremely grateful with, with her, obviously. Uh, I was a huge fan just before as well. So <laughs> you're a bigger fan clear. now, right? <laughs> exactly. So it's like, uh, you know, she has a, a company, like Girl Power is, is all around there. Um, her, her manager is her sister, her older sister. So there's like these two stories are um, super nice from the same country, so. I love it, I love it so much. And what I also love as well, and Rene will get a lot of this, is how much still happens through social media. And I think like, if I could go back and tell myself is the way to do, email is such a traditional thing, but speaking to drivers, is there anybody listening who wants to get into this sort of business, like talking uh, to drivers and, doing stuff for F1 feeder series. We've got uh, positions available. Um, <laughs> seriously, DMs, following people, sending messages. People are humans. It's crazy to think, but these drivers like Tatiana, they're, they're just humans. They use Instagram and Twitter and they do, so, and there's a lot of people that never see the message. It just goes into the, the archive one that no one ever goes into. Dan, take to me if you're listening, please reply. <laughs> But you never, never know. So I just love that it happens to you as well on the other side as well, Tatiana. That it's like, oh, I can send the DM and, and who knows. So I love that. I love that. Rene, you've got the next question. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to work this thing out with Carol G. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to advise the drivers I work with to just hit up some Dutch musicians because this is just brilliant, man. It's a uh, boys. Yeah, I've got a question here uh, via Instagram uh, from Becky Robson 98. Um, if there were no financial barriers and you could race anywhere, Tatjana, uh, which series would you pick and why? 
Ah, uh, that's a really good question. Now that can we say no Formula One because Formula One's like a cheat answer. So if we took Formula <laughs> One away, no, honestly, I think IndyCar. I would love to go back there. Um, I had such a great time. You know, it's it's brutal. The competition is unbelievable. Like you were describing, like anybody, you know, he can be on pole one one day, the next day P fifteen, and you're like, what? <laughs> So yeah, it's it's an amazing series, and um, I hope in the future I can I can go back there. I have a Twitter from uh, Andres Gutierrez at Andre S M G S, uh, and he asks, "What's your best memory from your experience at IndyCar this year?" Best memory, I think it was the Indy GP before the the Indy 500 that mm -hmm. we had like a super crazy race. I think it's the craziest race of my life. And um, we had like rain, semi-dry, yeah. um, rain with aero screen, which was scary, oh, yeah. uh, thunderstorm. So it was <laughs> everything at once and it, and it was super exciting. So in Indianapolis, I don't know, like the atmosphere, you know, just the place is unbelievable. So I would give anything to to go back there and have the same situation again. Would you have the same weather again? Is that the, is that the bit that Just was key maybe for you? intermediate instead of like <laughs> full wets and uh, and uh, windscreen, uh, uh, so, <laughs> like uh, so that I can see uh, fifty meters ahead. Um, that would be nice, but the rest I would do the same. Yeah, I need some wipers on the uh, on wipers, screen. Sorry, yeah. Uh, no, 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 you're, you're, I understand exactly what you mean, but yes, <laughs> I love that. Um, this question from KML Racing via Instagram. What was it like driving the 2013 Sauber? A very wide question, but like in terms of what was it like? What was it like? Is it something specific you can bring up? Was it the best thing ever? The sound is unbelievable. Like... I wish we could bring back, you know, this one B8, B10, B12. The, the sound of those engines is unbelievable. Um, I would say like it has more downforce than a Formula 2 car, obviously, and it's, it's amazing to drive a Formula 1 car. But like the new generation car, that is a huge step from, from the older F1 cars. So, yeah, it was obviously very, very special, uh, particularly when I drove in Tirano because... You know, you could see people waking up and, and looking at you outside of the track and they would stay there the whole day. And uh, and just to drive in such a legendary place, um, it's one of the, the best memories definitely so far in, in my career. Uh, the days that you drive a Formula One car are always very special. Yeah, I say that when I drive a Formula One car. It's a pretty special day, you know, casual. That's amazing. I love as well just that I forgot that 2013 was just pre the turbo hybrid so the noise difference is i think you'll get a lot of fans just for saying about the noise because the purists do i i, I tell you what i when i listened to it on the television i never was that bothered by it but when i went from a first grand prix as a turbo yeah. hybrid era i was like oh this is it has lost something and i don't know if we'll ever get it back i remember going to silverstone 2005 the very first time i went to a grand prix track and you could hear it because you know it's a big flat place you could hear it miles away you wouldn't have to be near the track to know they're on but these days when they go around the circuit it goes quiet for a while that was never the case it's uh yeah so you're driving the proper cars with the proper engines uh, very very lucky person next question is from i think it's anya anya own uh, via twitter favorite track you've raced on and is there a track that you want to race on but haven't and you've raced on a good amount of tracks around the world as well i'd say tati and so i'm really interested to see what your answer is well, I kind of like Le Mans. The 24 mm. hours is, is quite special. Like you go very quick, particularly like in the night, it's super challenging. And uh, I think that's one of like my favorite tracks and events, I would say. And then to race, I think I would like to race in, in Singapore and maybe um, Patras. Hmm. <laughs> that would be on my to-do list definitely. Yeah, it's, 
a pretty legendary one. The Singapore one surprises me, though. Have you been to Singapore? Is it just looking at the... Like, is it the event that you that makes you more attracted to, or is it the long-ass street circuit? Yeah, I think it's, like, it's just so long, so intense. It looks, mm. like, a super challenging. I don't know why I like suffering that much. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> like, I guess that's why it's too lazy. Um, but <laughs> it sounds like like hell so I'll, I'll like to try it <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what, what a great answer yeah i mean if you want to suffer you survive to that, it's good <laughs> that's very fair yeah uh Rene, please please uh got more suffering for tatiana <laughs> uh we've got a question from dom via discord um out of super formula indycar and formula 2 which series did you prefer the most and why I bet I know the answer. Come on, you, you know the answer. I, th I think you're going to say that Super Formula is obviously very special, but IndyCar was the best. So I would say, like, you know, all the the atmosphere, um, the the tracks, the competition. I would say IndyCar, but the best mm -hmm. car to drive is uh, Super Formula. That's like. You know, you go off throttle and you feel like you're breaking because the downforce is amazing. So, yeah. But maybe we can put the Super Formula cars in IndyCar and then that. There you go. But as you are one of very few drivers who drove all those three, can you maybe put us with a certain comparison? Because what I know of is that the Super Formula car is almost as quick as Formula One in Suzuka, right? I think it's a little bit slower, but I think most of that time it's it's not in the corners. It's more on the um, on straight on the straight really, and maybe the acceleration. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you have much more power, like one thousand horsepower in, in Formula One, so you feel that. But the the downforce and the cornering speed of the Super Formula is unbelievable. Um, it's yeah, one of the, the best things, like Suzuka, those S's are, <laughs> that, that's, that's a proper car. Uh, next one is from... Sorry, Rene, sorry, Rene. I've got this person here telling me they want to go around the right angles of Singapore while also telling me how good the S's of Suzuka are. But those two things are like the complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I like variety. <laughs> That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Sorry, Rene, please. I'll go on. I'll go on with the next one. Uh, Coldplay McPin fan, the real one, via Discord. Um, he asked you, Tatiana, who did inspire you to race in IndyCar? Um, obviously, you know, Montoya, he first went to, well, it was Champ Car back then. Um, but he jumped from there to Formula One. Mm -hmm. So in Colombia, we have always followed because it's, it's a closer market, the US market. So I, I, it always kind of was, was closer. And then you have Danica Patrick and many more female drivers that have gone through IndyCar. So I think the whole combination was a, was a, a no-brainer for me when I had the chance. You know, you, you don't often get the chance to uh, to race in IndyCar, so for, for AJ Foy racing as well. So, um, yeah, I think I got the inspiration since very early on from Montoya. And did you How get well to you know it? Him? Sorry, yeah, yeah exactly. No, no, exact same, the exact same question. This is this is a journalist instinct, yeah. How, how well do you know Juan Pablo? <laughs> Well, he's always been super helpful. Like, honestly, I I, I met him... Like officially, I would say that he started to give me tips in, in Bahrain but when he was um, testing the, the Porsche LMP1 back mm -hmm. in, I don't remember which year. 15, 2015? Uh, yeah. Well, it could be 15. That's a good memory. Um, <laughs> and uh, he started to give me tips back then. And whenever we you know, we're at the same racetrack or even doing the 24 hours of Le Mans, the, the, the WEC championship we did against each other. Um, and even the IndyCar race I did there, he was always super helpful. So um, I, I get on with, 
with him and his family really well and you know just to have a, a like tips from your idol it's it's quite cool so i we had a good battle in the indie grand prix so uh, yeah just, just be careful with what you dream <laughs> <laughs> i love that and you know when you get the impression from certain drivers that they'll be just really nice to to be around that's kind of what i got from when pablo so it sounds like it's uh, it's exactly as yeah, meet your hero sort of thing is exactly what you want want to see and of course we're watching uh, another Montoya rise through the ranks at the moment as well he's all about his family so um hopefully we'll see the Montoya name raise raise rise to the top pretty soon too next question is from <clears throat> from Sunny Claire by Twitter do you have any tips to get into motorsport at a late age and put in brackets 16 which is crazy to me as a somebody who's over double that age um thinking that's old but 16 is quite old if you want to start making it into into motorsport but what tips would you have well i think it depends on what you want to aim for but yeah. of course if you want to aim for formula one is is a little bit late it's not that it's impossible but if you want something like to have fun or you have endurance racing that is quite big these days and you know like sometimes when you start like with a bronze it's quite important in the lineup of, of certain teams. So I, I would say, you know, just to take like, um, I remember I did my, my license or my course. It was a three-day course. You like in America, you have like Skip Barber or a lot of other places. So just to have your like local track and start going there, I think it always, it always helps. Like uh, that's how I, I started uh, with a go car rental truck near my house, and then you you meet people there, and then you start you start um, going up with with the level and categories. But I think that's the best way to. It's never too late, and you can you can start by going local first. I tell you something. It's the F1 Feeder Series podcast, but I've spoken to how many drivers on this podcast who tried to go a different route from F1 and were happier for it. Uh, that I think you raise a very good point. They might be a bit late for Formula One at 16, but you could have a pretty damn good endurance career or anything career outside of F1, no matter your age. So again, rays of positivity that I like. Now, these two questions from Coley via Twitter and from Crony, Crony Edgar <laughs> via Discord. <laughs> Oh boy, you guys are going to kill me. Um, somewhat on the same level. So Coley wants to know, what's your long-term goal for your motorsport career? And uh, Mr. Edgar wants to know, would you like to race in IndyCar again or is your ultimate destination now elsewhere? Now, we've spoken about it already a little bit of direct answers, but what do you think? Like, what's what's the goal? Do you want to just make a load of money and get paid to do this for the rest of your life? Do you think I want to win Indy? What what is the goal? Yeah, you know, it started with with a dream of becoming a Formula One driver. That is still, you know, you never know what what can happen. I still wanna wanna be in Formula One. I'm not gonna deny that, but I I also want to leave from what I'm doing from being a professional racing driver. So. That's kind of the, the aim at the moment, uh, to be able to live from what I love doing. Um, and in that part, like also try to inspire. I think there's a lot of females out there that, you know, they, they don't know if, if they want to or they can go go-karting or they can go to the highest level in motorsports. And, and I kind of want to keep opening doors for for them and um, I'm not just fighting for me anymore so that's something I, I enjoy doing um, and giving back what I've learned going through the ranks so that's something I'm very focused at the moment. Lovely answer uh, there are some questions just after this one from you now Rene as well touching on that so uh, Rene please give me the segue out after this. Uh, the next one is from Ari at Ratchet Finn via Twitter um, got two questions. Hi, Tatiana. Uh, which teammate of yours do you think is the fastest? Any up and coming driver from South America that you think people should follow more? Good question. I think the quickest teammate I've had, I have had, was Antoine Hibert. I was mm -hmm. 
on like I don't know how he made that pink car go so quick, honestly. Um, so I'm, I'm very grateful to have been able to to know him and to to learn from him. Um, and then from young drivers in 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 South America, there's quite a lot of Mexicans. Obviously, Sebastian Montoya, um, a lot of other Colombians as well doing uh, Formula Regional and F4 in um in france so just follow them all because they need they need that kind of exposure and and you know you never know um i'm pretty sure that there's quite a lot of talent in, in south america and, and we need that kind of of support very early on yeah i uh we've had we've had some of them on the podcast and they're bloody quick a lot of uh, the south americans at the moment so yeah I, we've lamenting at the moment especially with the ADAC news this week where the championship's not going to go ahead next year the the fall of most sport in Germany at the moment but it seems to be coinciding with a massive ramp up with some South American junior drivers at the moment so always been a really good place a good breeding ground but at the moment just seen an abundance of talent so uh yeah interested to see where we're going now I'm always remiss to talk about the female male difference but of course females have far underrepresented in motorsport and as you said yourself Tatiana being inspiration giving back and talking about it raises the awareness makes it viable makes it visible as well to other young girls who might want to make it into motorsport so I preface that because we've got a few questions now about women in motorsport and I'm very glad that most of them were actually about other things because you are an athlete at the end of the day rather than just an athlete who happens to be a woman and that's that's like it's it's two different things for me so i do want to talk about it though so i've got this first question from jack jack benham 13 by twitter how do you feel about the new announcement about the new f2 chassis design for 2024 and do you think it will help get more women into formula two well i i think it's you know i've talked to a lot of uh, the lara people and f2 the organization so they have you know, one, they, they wanted to, um, to have my opinion on, you know, power steering on what was, I was struggling with the measurements with the, you know, the seating wheel, the pedals, the length of your arms, your, your trunk, everything. So they've been actively trying to make it a more in- inclusive and to take our measurements more in consideration because we, we are different. So I think that's really positive. Um, but I don't know what what they will decide at the end whether you will have power steering or not. But I'm I'm glad that things are are moving forward in in that regard. And I really hope that that we can have more more female talent in F3 and and F2 in the in the near future. I think that's a really good answer, to be honest, Tatiana. I mean, <laughs> they might ignore everything you said, but at least they asked, so which is possibly more than um, what was happening 20, 30 years ago. So, no, that, that doesn't really sound positive. Um, a very wide uh, question from Vinny Alitalo. Hello, Vinny Alitalo. Uh, what is it like to be a woman in motorsport, which is historically a male environment? Now, that's the question from Vinny. I'm going to add a little bit to it and say, how do you think it is different today in 2022, almost 2023, from say 2010? So when you first started to really start making make moves within the sport? Oh, I have seen a huge change. Uh, there's still a lot to um, to be done, definitely. But you know, you see now female mechanics, more engineers. Uh, we have had team principals in, in Formula One. There's more um, girls starting in karting, although we still need more. But I think there's like that we start to to understand the issues that we have had uh, coming through because there's not much data from from women in in this sport in uh, in driving or in in any other area of motorsports and and we need to to have data to then start to to um to change things and and i feel like people are are getting that and there's more being talked about it uh, about those issues and and that's the easier we can start to fix them but um yeah there's still 
still a lot of things to to be done, I think. Um, but we are moving slowly but surely in the right direction. So uh, hopefully we'll, yeah, I think by having more girls starting, then we can start to sort of balance it out and, and have more info to um, to really modify a lot of things. Yeah, I'm, uh, I echo those statements because as people who've heard the podcast before have heard me say, it's the fact that there's just, people have always critiqued that there's not a, a potentially Jamie Chadwick could make it into Formula 2 or Formula 3 next year. And that might be true, but also if there's only going to have 50 people versus say 50,000 people going into motorsport male versus female, then maybe Jamie Chadwick's the best of 50, but then when you're going to get the best of 50,000, which is Max Verstappen, it's very unlikely that one in the 50 is going to be the one. So getting more women, getting more girls into karting is what we are needing to do. And that's no disrespect to Jamie Chadwick because she's still a bloody good driver. But that's, that's, you're stating the facts, Tatiana, and I like it. Rene, please, yes. our next question. Speaking of Jamie Chadwick. It's, it's a very good question from Jake Herring, who has obviously no sort of taste at all for football because his name is Jake Herring MCFC which is Manchester City so what the but via Twitter he asked you Tatiana um, did you ever consider racing in the W series no never um, and why not really, that it's not in my DNA you know I, I always thought I could compete against the boys differently obviously, because we are different, we feel different, we think different, our bodies are different. So I, I knew I could find my way of of getting to, to the top of the sport. And I never, I want to race against the best, regardless of genders. And mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I was going to get anything close to that by, by racing there. And it was for me like three steps, going three steps down uh, from where I was. Um, I'm still like very grateful with people that want to push women forward and want to give them a, an opportunity. And um, but yeah, it was was definitely not for me. <laughs> You've been quite close to Susie Wolf, who was quite a vocal critic. I remember when W Series was was starting out, and I. <sighs> What I'm going to ask, I suppose, isn't meant to be so as difficult as it sounds, but then you've got F1 Academy, which is like the second now female-only racing series, which is starting. Do you think, and I don't know if you can speak for Susie, I don't know how much you keep in touch now, is you thinking these are the positive steps, but not in the right place, potentially? I'm putting words in your mouth, and I apologise for that. Honestly, like, you know, with the same as W Series, you know, you have to wait and see. And mm. to me, it, it didn't work because... Jamie had to race there for three years, so she couldn't progress to F3. And to me, that that is a bit like a failure. Um, then, obviously, you need to look at, okay, uh, if this F1 Academy is going to help um, create a, a bigger pool and giving them like more track time um, and trying to prepare them for F3, but to hopefully guarantee an F3 seat to, to the champion, then that's a different story. But um, I think it's, we'll have to, to wait and see. No, you, the, uh, the information yeah. is light on the ground right now. I'm very, very aware of that. I don't want to push you too much on it as well, Tatiana. We're you know, just bringing up Jane Chadwick. Wish her well with her uh, adventures in America as well. That's some good news yeah, coming I think out of it all. She's going to have a great time there. Yeah, I'm, uh, was, I'm very jealous. She was very, she was very <laughs> excited about the car when she came on the podcast earlier in the year. So um, I'm hoping it's going to be as good as she hopes it would be. Uh, the next question is, um, I'm just going to call it Saggy. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can see why I'm not saying the full name. Have you had moments in your career where you've doubted yourself only because of people criticising the fact that you're a woman, which is quite a sentence to say, but I'm guessing the way that it's, or the, the question is actually trying to say is, has a criticism only because of your gender ever got to you? Obviously, you know, you read, you read certain comments and it, at the beginning, it, it hurts when you're not, you know, when, when you're not this, this tough driver that I think I've become. But um, for sure, it's, it's not nice to, to read those kind of, of messages. And I think, you know, sometimes people assume certain things, particularly in motorsport, that is really a difficult sport to understand because there's so many factors that as a driver you don't control um 
like in which team you are, which car you're driving from the team, and a lot of I things. I spec series, Tatiana, all the cars are exactly the same, exactly <laughs> the same. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, never doubted that for a second. But uh, yeah, it's, it's tough when people outside just judge you based on, on certain things. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, you, I, it, it hurt. But then it made me like much harder because I'm here because I, I love racing. I'm, I'm competing in one of the best championships in, in the world. And I'm there for a reason, not just because I'm a, a woman. So um, I try to, yeah, to, to ignore those kind of comments and, and focus more on myself, on, on improving and uh, on, on really um, doing what I love most, which is racing. Well, highlighting again what I said earlier is that these are just regular people. You are just a person who opens social media and you have feelings. So don't be a dick, people. That's that's a takeaway. Don't be a, don't be a dick. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Put on a t-shirt. Rene, final question, yes. please. It's uh it's it's grammar wise not the best question ever, but it's pop up via Discord, and I'm going to try to get the if you could combine elements from formula 2 super formula and indycar cars what would be in the best car for women in the single seaters i guess he or she tries to ask you what's what are the best elements of those cars for a woman um i would say taking the power steering from super formula <laughs> that's quite nice <laughs> Um, and then I would take the Super Formula car and then go to IndyCar because they're very open to have women. Um, mm. We have had them in the past and the whole atmosphere, uh, the fan base, everyone's sort of rooting for you uh, regardless of, of your, your gender or, you know, they, they know that you're there for a reason. So that's, again, the copy paste from one of the, the, only, the other questions. I think I what I'm say. hearing is just you want the Super Formula car, as simple as that. The best <laughs> component is all of the Super Formula car, which I think you and Rene have had some sort of DM before this to start <laughs> <laughs> saying, yeah. Let's you just... cut me. <laughs> <laughs> you cut Bust. me. Busted. No, I'm, I'm all for uh, talking, bigging up Super Formula, so don't uh, don't worry about that whatsoever. Tatiana, I know we'll be pushing into your time, so I'm going to call it quits here. That's all the time we have this week. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. If you'd like to have your question asked on a future episode, use the hashtag AskF1FS on Twitter. Drop any questions below if you're watching on YouTube. Respond to our Instagram stories or posts, or let us know what questions you have on your mind on our Discord. Look for the podcast questions channel. If you are watching on YouTube, dropping a like on the video, leaving a comment and subscribing to the channel already helps us out. And if you are listening, leaving a review on the podcast platform you're listening on is greatly appreciated. Finally, check out f1feederseries.com for more feeder series insight and follow f one Feeder Series 1, F1 FS Americas and F1 FS Live on Twitter. And check out Transfer Weekly on YouTube. You can find the links to all of those plus Twitter accounts for myself and everybody else on the podcast in the YouTube description or the podcast show notes. Until next time, we have been the F1 Feeder Series podcast. Goodbye. Goodbye.